The World 250cc Motocross Championship. Round one kicks off at Talavera here in Spain. New men, new machines for the 94 season. The defending World Motocross Champion 250cc series, that is. Greg Albertine, the South African, riding number one on the Suzuki. The BFE Johnson Suzuki, a changing machine from Hondas of last year as the gate drops on heat one. Into that top right hand corner. And it is the Belgium. Number two, riding this year the JHK Silkeling sponsored Kawasaki, Stefan Everts. There's Albertine Di Marie, the Frenchman. Yves Di Marie riding the Pepsi Cola Honda. Coming up from the 125 ranks of 93 to the 250 ranks of 94, he was back there in third. But it's Albertine now chasing Everts. And Everts, there is Di Marie. Everts tipped possibly to win his first World 250 Championship for this year. But I'm sure this man, the South African, 21-year-old Greg Albertine, has other ideas about that. There's Di Marie, number 80. Finished second in the 125 ranks last year. Marnik Bevorts this year with the Johnson's BFE Suzuki team. But it's JHK mounted Silkling, Kawasaki man, Stefan Everts, the Belgium, that leads he won round one of this 250 series. Albertine second. It's De Marier number 80, the Frenchman from southern France, third. Then number three, a former 250 world champion, the American. Donnie Schmidt riding Chesterfield Yamaha for 94. Monique Bavortz, number five. Then it's Kurt Nickel. Rode the 250 series for the first time last year. Finished fourth in the championship, riding with the Castrol Hondas for this year. And Michaeli Fanton, number 13, goes through on the inside. Well, it's lucky for some and certainly unlucky for him at the moment. Albertine now makes a challenge for the lead. Albertine goes in to the lead and Everts begins to drop back. The South African defending champion already stamping his authority. And Di Marie goes up into second. We've lost Everts and we suspect and hear that he's having a problem with the wheels. A rear wheel break up on the Kawasaki causing Everts to drop back. Bevort's coming through now. He's up a place. Jacket flag then for the defending champ, Albertine. He wins race one. Then Di Marie, the Frenchman. And Donny Schmidt, the American, finished third. Well, there's Albertine. First race underway. He leads the championship so far. He too on the line, the gate drops, here they go. Can Albertine do it again? Stefan Everts dropped out of heat one with a broken rear wheel. Well, that's hard luck, but it's Schmidt that goes into the lead from Albertine and Everts. Donnie Schmidt out on Chesterfield Yamaha, the new color scheme for 1994. As the rest of the pack comes screaming through, we've got a faller somewhere. The flags are being shown, but Schmidt happily away in the lead. Albertine and Everts. One, two, and three. And Everts not scoring points so far. Di Marie back there in fourth, but look at Albertine in a determined mood. 20 points already to his credit in this opening round. Looking for a back to back win, but I'm sure Stefan Everts has something to say about that. Donny Schmidt, number three. A former 125 and 250cc World Motocross Champion. So is Albertine Everts, only winning a 125 so far. That's Andre Bartolini. He's got Di Marie right behind him. Bartolini, teammate to Schmidt for 94. And the battle is raging. Royale, look at Everts in a very determined mood. He wants to win this one if he can. But Albertine on the Johnson's Bay, if he's a Suzuki on the pace, chasing Donny Schmidt on the Yamaha. Down the hill comes Schmidt again. Fast, exciting circuit here in Spain. Big crowd turned out to enjoy this motocross racing. Albertine still there in second. We're looking back for Everts. 
and he appears to have gone with a mechanical problem, but it's a win then for Donny Schmidt, the American. Second for the Frenchman, Yves de Marier. And third for Andre Bartolini. And is it fourth for Albertine? Yes. Fifth then for Trampas Parker. Donny Schmidt, are you happy with that one? Yeah, I had a good start. That's the way I planned it. Uh, first moto, I ran a little, little hard into the corner and I missed the corner. And this time I wasn't going to miss it. And I actually did go past it a hair, but. I got on some good dirt and had enough traction to come out in front, so it's a tough race. It was tough. Yeah, there was three of you on the same pace, very little to choose, but you kept cool. Yeah, it was, I just figured, you know, if they, I'll keep going at this pace. If they catch me, it's one thing, but to pass me is another thing, so. Congratulations, Donny Schmidt. Thanks. Round two of the 250 Championship moves to Vulcansward here in Holland. And from the hard tracks of Spain, we are here in the soft sand of Holland. And what can you say except this should be a good track for the Belgian riders. And into the lead goes Bavortz and De Witt. Two of those Belgian riders joined now by number two, Stefan Everts. Very, very deep energy sapping stuff that. Donny Schmidt going through. There's Werner DeWitt, number seven, the third of the Johnson's BFE team members, but it is the JHK man himself. 21-year-old Stefan Everts, the Belgium. Absolutely mastering the first race. No one got within looking distance of him. He came home to finish first. Bevorts it was that came home in second, and he was followed home by his teammate, Werner DeWitt. Belgium one, two and three in race one. Here's race two as they get underway. Massive crowd have turned out to enjoy this motocross racing. Into the first set of jumps and it is once again race one winner, Stefan Everts going for a back-to-back. -to, -back. to win this time, he finished third first time out. He's looking over his shoulder and it is Albertine, then Di Maria. But it is this man that dominates, Stefan Everts son of former world motocross champion Harry Everts and really it's a family tradition. South African Greg Albertine the defending champion having to contend with the deep sand and contend he does. Seven, DeWitt, he finished third. There's Yoki Carlison, that's teammate to this man, the JHK Kawasaki rider Stefan Everts. Number two, he leads the race. And he continued to lead without any challenge whatsoever from any other rider. He came home to take another 20 points. Back to back, that's 40 points. And that's his first score in the championship title. Second man home, his teammate Yogi Cullison and Greg Albertine finished third.
Round three moves across the borders to Italy here. And Donny Schmidt currently leading the World Championship. But Stefan Everts enabling himself with his back-to-back -back win in Holland the week before is now fifth in the championship. There he is, number two, the JHK Kawasaki Silkling sponsored runner. 79, Andre Bartolini, teammate to that man, number three, the American Donny Schmidt. Green flag is up, race one gets underway. Here it is, round three. And it looked like Schmidt who got the whole shot. Yes, indeed, the championship leader at the moment gets away in front. We're looking back behind him and that's Everts. Stefan Everts desperately wanting to score major points. Then it's Bavortz and Albertine. Then De Witt was there as well. So the Belgium's running well here in Italy. But it's now Everts that has gone to the front. Schmidt dropping back to third. That's Albertine to second and the battle is most certainly on. Stefan Everts trying to repeat his performance in the previous round in Holland where he won both races. He's out in front in this first one. Albertine, unable to do anything about the speed of the Belgium in front. Robbie Herring, that's the British rider, number 12, going through on the Kawasaki. That's Follet, the young Frenchman, number 14. Then Talon Volan, number eight. Then Schmidt, Schmidt dropping back. Then it's Bartolini and then Di Maria, 77, the Frenchman. But Stefan Everts stamping his authority all over this one. Albertine unable to close down on him. And a former South African resident here, the British rider Robbie Herring. Everts, unstoppable in the lead, squares off the corner. Albertine comes around on the Suzuki, he squares it off. Then it's Herring. Kawasaki's one and three at the moment with a Suzuki sandwiched in the middle. The big hill they come, but it is Stefan Everts that heads up the hill. He heads, he won. Albertine chasing hard. Then it's Herring. This is a good ride from the British rider, Robbie Herring. Then it's Bollet, number 14. He's got the American Talon Volan. And his teammate, Di Maria, behind him, both riding the Pepsi Cola Hondas. But it's a checkered flag and 20 points then for Stefan Everts. Behind him in second place, it's Greg Albertine. And third, a good result for the British rider, that's Herring. Then it's Bollet, then Voland, and then Di Maria. He too on the line, here they come. Can Everts do another 2020 back to back as he did the week before? Oh, somebody's gone down and see who it was. But that looks like Bartolini that's got the whole shot. Indeed it is, it's Albertine behind him. And look at the mechanics cheering him on. 79 Andre Bartolini. There's Volan behind Everts. There's Schmidt. Bevort. Then it's Bollet. Then Herring. Then DeWitt. And then it's Parker. Number six, Trampers Park on the KTM. And it looks very much like Everts has gone into the lead. Indeed he has. Well, this is breathtaking stuff. Stefan Everts most certainly looking for maximum points. And Greg Albertine and Schmidt, two of our top championship contenders at the moment, unable to stop him. There is Schmidt watching his championship lead whittled away by this man. Number two, the Belgian Stefan Everts. If he wins this, that'll be a maximum of 80 points in two events. Albertine going through. The battle is certainly on. He's got Herring behind him, finishing third in race one, Robbie Herring. But it is Stefan Everts. 20, 20, 40 points. That's two in a row. Talon Volan second. Then it's Albertine for third.
Round four then from Austria, Swan and Stat, and it's quite wet and sticky here today. There's Donny Schmidt. Led the championship for the first two rounds, but after round three, with the impressive wins, back-to-back -back wins from Stefan Everts, that championship lead now whittled away. Into that first corner they go, and it was Schmidt up the hill, and you can see the conditions are absolutely treacherous. Overnight rain has turned the circuit into an absolute quagmire. It's so difficult. There is Stefan Everts chasing Trampers Parker, number six. And around the outside goes De Maurier, the Frenchman. Talon Boland there with him, number eight. And it really is just a question of finding grip. There's Kurt Nickel going up the hill, passing Albertine. But Schmidt, the American, now very much accustomed to riding on just about any kind of circuit. Trampers Parker, number six, on the KTM. Then it's DeWitt, behind DeWitt. Well, we really couldn't tell, but that was Everts going through. Then uh, Pouzard, number 10. Then it was DiMario, but Schmidt, number three, going for a pull-off on his goggles, a roll-off system. Trampers Parker chasing hard in second. DeWitt with Everts right on his tail. It's just a quest of finding some grip more than anything else. Talon Volan behind this group, but there is Schmidt once again, number three. Trampers Parker, the American, now resides in Italy and very happy to do so. There's Everts just gone through. DeWitt behind him and Puzar, number 10. A change of machines for 1994 on Kawasaki. Schmidt heads heat one. Circuit conditions beginning to dry just a little bit, making grip a little bit easier to get. Parker, well, he's no stranger to riding in wet, sticky conditions, and certainly no stranger to KTMs. He goes around the bottom corner as we look back for third place man, and here he is, very gingerly finds a bit of grip in that berm. Stefan Everts, the Belgian, obviously more happy in the deep sand than he is here in the deep mud. But Austria renowned for its unpredictable weather conditions as Schmidt takes the chequered flag, 20 points, and heat one. Second, the Italian-American, as we should now call him, Trampus Parker, number six, on the KTM. And the Belgian, third, it's Stefan Everts, number two. Fifteen second board spins around here in Austria and the gate will drop, here it does. It's round four, Schmidt won the opening race. Can he do the same in race two? The sun has come out, it has dried off considerably and we've got, that's Paul Mayling, 21 up the banking, but it's Marnik Bavortz, the Belgian rider. Then it is Kurt Nickel, then the Frenchman, Di Mario, then Stefan Everts. Herring is there as well, as they settle down. He's chasing Schmidt at the moment, but Marnique Bevortz, number five, heads this heat to. Nickel up in the second. Di Mario, third. It is fourth then for Stefan Everts, chasing those two in front. Castrol Honda versus Pepsi Cola Honda. And here comes a JHK Kawasaki. But Bavortz on the Biffy Johnson Suzuki, not giving up that lead at all. And Everton goes to second. Nickel to third, Di Maria to fourth, Schmidt to fifth. Six for Robbie Herring. Some early good results on the British rider, but Bavortz absolutely reveling in these conditions, and it's very tricky, as you can see, in and out of the ruts. And Everts looking very much a potential winner in this second heat as he closes on Bavortz. Schmidt goes through. Still got there Herring behind him. Herring takes the outside line. Schmidt takes the inside line. But it's Bavortz and just look at Everts. 
It's woken him up. The track's dried out. And Everts is on the gas. Nickel chasing DeMario, Herring chasing Nickel, the two Brits. Then it's Schmidt behind Herring. There is Albertine. Not a good race for Alby at the moment, the defending champion. Here they come. Up the hill, up of vaults. Round the corners. Can he hold off the attention to... Oh! And a block pass on Bavort by Stefan Everts. And Bavort didn't see that coming. Well, that puts pay to Bavort's lead. Herring coming through. Oh, very nearly there, Schmidt on Albertine. And Schmidt gets the drive. Takes Albertine's place. But it is Stefan Everts that heads for the chequered flag. And a win in heat two. Then it's Marnik Bavort. He held on to second. Third for the Frenchman Di Maria, then it was Herring in fourth. Round five then here in France gets underway. And it is Everts that leads the championship into this round with Albertine second, Schmidt third, Amber Vorts fourth. And just listen to the crowd. That is Greg Albertine that leads and the French will go absolutely wild here. In particular, if De Marier can get the lead and he's second at the moment. Number 80, Yves de Marier, Kurt Nickel is third. And the French absolutely fanatical about their motocross. That is, oh, well, look at this, Fanton. That was Stefan Everts with an extremely second-hand looking bike. He's obviously tangled with somebody. And the question now is who? Well, that was Talon Bowler that he was shaking his fist at. So one can only assume that Voland was the perpetrator of that badly broken Kawasaki of Everts. Well, we shall see what happens in heat two. He won then, led by this man, the South African, Greg Albertine. Di Marier, currently fifth in the world standings, chasing in second place. Then it's Nickel, number four, the Castrol Honda rider from Great Britain. Then Schmidt, he's third in the championship. Paul Malin, 21 files through. There's Trampus Parker. He prefers the wet conditions. But it's Albertine, and look at the French. They are urging Du Maurier on to greater things. Can he catch Albertine, the South African? Can he take the race win in front of his home crowd? That's the question that we all ask. Nickel going through. Schmidt right behind him, number three on the Chesterfield Yamaha trying to defend that championship position. But there's Albertine. He is currently behind Everts in the championship. Everts going to be a non-finisher in this one. And De Marier trying just about everything, squeezing every inch of power there is from that Pepsi-Cola Honda. The Castrol Honda here of the British rider, number four, Kurt Nickel. But it is unstoppable Albertine. He has the lead in heat one. De Marie can only look in wonder at the back wheel of the South African as he clears off around the French circuit here. Albertine in a determined mood. He wants the championship lead. Everts is out from this one. Going to score no points whatsoever. But Albertine on course for 20. De Marie on course for 17. Nickel, third. He's on course for the 15 points. 
that will help his championship standings. Circuit conditions quite dry now. Albertine comes around, but just look at the crowd. They are going wild. Fanatical Frenchman cheering on their hero. They've not seen the likes of this since the great motocross champion Jean-Michel Bale, a 125 and 250 world motocross champion. Went to America and showed the Americans how it should be done. And there's no reason to believe that Demarier probably won't follow in his footsteps. Demarier, 80, the Frenchman. Hells from southern France, but it's going to be a checkered flag then for Albertine. He takes the 20 points. The gate drops for race two. Donny Schmidt was the boy that whole shot in the race. He had a fourth in race one and certainly looking to improve his position in race two. But it, it wasn't to have it all his own way to start off with. They were climbing all over him in the first few corners and places were changed. He went back to third at one stage. That was Trampus Parker that had Headed the uh, field away, he passed Schmidt, and Schmidt dropped back to third. So it's the KTM rider, the American, Italian as we now call him, Trampus Parker number six that heads race two. Everts back there in fourth at the moment. There is Parker. There is Schmidt now up into second. Paul Malin it is, number 21, just dropping back to fourth. There's Albertine, winner of heat one. And Schmidt pressurising his fellow American as he tries for the lead. And does he do it? No. Parker finds the extra little bit of drive, but this really is 100% effort from Donnie Schmidt, and he finds it. He cannons off the berm, gets that extra bit of drive, and passes Parker for first place. So it's Donnie Schmidt, number three, leading heat two. But where is Demaria? Look at the crowd and they'll give you an indication. Must be back there in about fourth behind Stefan Everts. Number 80, Demaria, he's got the current world champion Albertine right on his back wheel. But Yves Demaria, coming from the 125 ranks of last year into the 250s and really is giving all the main contenders a run for the money. Stefan Everts goes up a place, Parker drops back. That is DiMario in between, right behind Parker, but it is Schmidt that has the legs on the rest. Everts, no score in race one when he tangled with Talon Volan. But look at this, they're all climbing all over Trampus Parker, DiMario, Albertine, and Everts will begin, and now DiMario goes to the inside line. Parker gets the drive up the hill. This is where Schmidt took him, no, this time. Parker hangs on. But Albertine and Demaria giving Trampus Parker a nightmare of a ride. The KTM man, the Italian American, has been in Europe for so many years, well, we can't remember for how long now. But Schmidt, he's been around, I would say, around nine years now, about the same time as Bob Moore and a former 125-250 world champion, and it's squeezing time because Albertine tried to get on the inside of Everts there, and Everts shut the door. Aha, uh -huh, you're not coming through here, he says. He needs to score points. Schmidt being urged on by his team members, and Albertine still cannot find a way past Stefan Everts. Everts riding for just about everything he's worth. Parker, then it's DiMario, and DiMario is still unable to get past the KTM rider. But Schmidt settles down to a pace at the front, and Albertine now up to second, Everts third, Parker fourth, DiMario fifth. And Trampus Parker, he's having a superb ride. The French crowd just a little subdued now as their hero, unable to get through, but a wave to the crowd as the American Donny Schmidt comes round and takes the win.
Round six moved across to Poland and uh, Gdansk. Beautiful weather conditions and a beautiful circuit. A few alterations that the riders requested at the start of the first race, which was won by Greg Albertine. Stefan Everts chased him home second. Yogi Carlson, Kurt Nickel and Werner DeWitt finished in the top five. Race two then came to the line as the five second board went up. And could Albertine win another and make it a back to back win? Everts, the only person so far to have done it twice in a row. They got into that first corner and confusion all over the circuit. And there was Albertine. Well, he wasn't going to make it a, a race win so easy this time. There's Nickel. There's Babortz, number five. But it was Paul Cooper, the South African, with Everts and Parker. Donnie Schmidt going through. Kaylee Fanton, one of that group. There's Robbie Herring, and there is Albertine. But Cooper knocked back off the pace by Everts, the South African. Paul Cooper, the British national 125 champion. There's Smith, Carlison, Pussar, and DeWitt. And there's Albertine. He's got a lot to do. He won the opening moto. Everts now in the lead, wants to fight back and take a win here in Poland in the second race. Cooper, this is one of his best rides so far. Schmidt, then it's Carlison, then Puzar, then DeWitt. Parker, and then it's Albertine, Herring, Fanton. But Everts, there was no stopping him in race two. Up and away he went so far. Schmidt chasing Cooper. Carlison. A battle for the positions, there's Albertine. A tremendous charge through the pack. Stefan Everts still in the lead, untouchable at the moment. Settling down to his pace here in Poland. And being urged on there, that's Donny Schmidt. Number three on the Chesterfield Yamaha. Schmidt, an early leader of the championship. There's Albertine, he really is on the gas. Closing down on people one after another. Puzar, number 10. And we've got Schmidt in the lead now. We've lost Stefan Everts. Everts, uncharacteristic mistake by the Belgium. And it is Albertine from Schmidt now. Can Schmidt get past Albertine? Albertine, a winner of race one. Down in the first corner in race two. Has come through the pack like an absolute knife through butter and now leads. And there is Stefan Everts. Well, what can you say? He must be in an absolutely angry mood with himself. Way down the field at the moment. Paul Malin, the British rider, behind him. But this isn't going to be maximum points for Stefan Everts. The checkered flag then goes out for Albertine. Back to back, 2020. That's 40 points. Schmidt finishes second. And what a race that was for Albertine. From the back to the front. No clutch, he says. Who needs a clutch? Paul Cooper, and there's the dejected Stefan Everts. Round seven came from Lommel in Belgium in the deep sand here and a rider parade. Greg Albertine sat at the front of the World Championship. You really don't need to win today, do you? Yeah, I do. It's a long way to the end of the World Championship and uh, there's a lot of points to be won. So uh, 
going on to this first race. I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, I've got a nice, comfortable lead, so I'm just going to use my head. So a top three finish in both races will suit you fine? Well, top one would suit me even better, but, uh, yeah, I'll be happy with the top three. Well, Albertine leading the championship at the moment from Donny Schmidt and Stefan Everts. Those are the top three, and provisions made here to expand the fuel tanks on the bikes. Very deep sand, having to load extra fuel into the bikes to make the end of the race. 30 minutes plus the two laps in total. And it really is a power sapping circuit. It's Werner DeWitt that has gone to the front. Stefan Everts, second. Then Tom Van Grinsen, 55 going through. Puzar, where's Albertine? There he is. The world championship leader at the moment, back in about fifth. Demare was back behind that group. But it's Everts. Staging a challenge for the lead over DeWitt. Van Grinsen goes through. As we pick them up, there's Albertine. He's up behind his teammate, Marnique Bevortz. But look at that, Stefan Everts cockily looks over his shoulder to see where second place man is. And there he is, number seven, Werner DeWitt on the Johnsons. Be if he's Suzuki. Everts. And DeWitt's not that too far back not to allow Everts to become too complacent. Albertine is back there somewhere, but there is Bavortz. He's third at the moment. But it's going to be a first race win for Stefan Everts. Second, Werner DeWitt, and behind him his teammate, Marnik Bavortz. And Albertine ran out of fuel on the last lap. Belgium's one, two and three in race one. Here is the in-track watering system Keeping the dust down for race two, and Albertine there, hopefully this time, with enough fuel in the bike to get him through the race. Teammate Bevortz right beside him, Nickel on the inside. Who's it going to be? And it's Everts once again. DeWitt going through. There is um, Nickel, but he's got DeMaria in front of him as we look back. And it really is a bit of a, a mixed match of riders. And there is Bevort. So it's Albertine that's up in front of him. But it's Stefan Everts that leads at the moment. If he wins this, it could be another back-to-back -back win for him. Which, in my recollection, would make it three in total. And I don't think that's been done too often by many a rider. Everts leads to Witt. Number seven in second at the moment. Then it's Bevort. So we've lost Albertine again. Obviously been off the bike somewhere. Here he is. He's back in fourth, charging to get back up somewhere near the front. And it is Stefan Everts. 2020, 40 points. He's done it again. The 250 Grand Prix Series comes to the United Kingdom and to Fox Hills Motor Park, round eight of the series. And as you can see here, some track alterations going on before the start of race one. Well, while that track maintenance was being carried out, the riders came down onto the line. It was De Marier, the Frenchman, that led them to the line first, being the fastest in time train in the morning. The gate dropped and race one got underway. And it was the defending champion, the South African, Greg Albertine, that went to the front. 
Di Mario second, Voland Bavortz and Nickel, the British rider, round the outside of Werner De Witt and Stefan Evans. And Rob Herring, number 12, trailing that group. But Albertine, number one, was at the front. Di Mario, very much a late charger in this championship. Voland on his teammate, the Pepsi Cola Honda. Stefan Evans, number two, trailing that group at the moment. But Albertine stamping his authority on race one. He is the current champion and the championship leader, Di Mario, the Frenchman, now working under the direction of Jackie Vimond, the former French World 250 motocross champion. Marnik Bevoltz, number five, and Everts is on the move. And there is Robbie Herring, the British rider, riding the RWJ's Kawasaki, and Albertine on the Suzuki, leading race one. The South African, Di Mario, finished second last year in the 125 series, transferred across to the 250s, and he's looking good for a potential third place in this championship this year. Albertine at the moment, it is at the front. Really unworried about what's going on behind him. Just making sure those points come. Di Mario, very quick, this Frenchman, particularly on these dry circuits. Volan, the American, his teammate. Now, Stefan Everts, the Belgian rider, moving up a place or two, but it's Albertine who takes 20 points from race one. Di Mario second, Everts third. Greg Albertine, you lost the championship lead last week and you said it won't be long before you're back. One heat and you're level on points. What have you got to say? Well, it was a good heat for me and uh, I shouldn't expect anything less. I am the world champion and I've got a reputation to keep. But what a performance today. You took the lead on the first lap and you never looked back. Well, that's it. I like this track and with all the great support I'm having here, it's just hard not to win. Well, with oodles of modesty oozing from Greg Albertine after race one, and he said, well, I should be winning, I am the world champion. Heat two prepares to get underway. Albertine restores himself at the top of the championship. What well, can the Belgium Stefan Everts do about Albertine now? It is De Maurier, the Frenchman, that has gone to the front. Nickel. Then it's Schmidt and Albertine, and Everts is behind those two. So we are in for a scrap, but the Frenchman, Yves Du Maurier, very much in the past a supercross specialist, but now under the uh, direction of Vimond, Jackie Vimond beginning to produce the results. Nickel, number four, right in the Castrol Honda. There's Albertine, he's now third. Everts is fourth. Then it's Schmidt and Bavortz and Voland. But Di Mario at the moment is setting a blistering pace. There is Nickel, still second, the British rider, the many times national champion. Changing to the 250 category, and just look at that. Well, that was taking what one would describe as your marital prospects very much in, in hand. And Albertine got away with it. And I should think he'll be talking with a higher voice when he finishes the race. Di Mario leads, it's now Albertine for second. Started racing at the age of nine, but look at Stefan Everts. Well, that pass at Albertine dropped on Nickel must have unnerved him. The concentration slipping and Nickel allowing Everts to go through. But there ain't no catching this man. Yves Di Mario from Southern France, racing in the lead and heat two. Then it's Albertine and then it's Stefan Everts. Nickel, four, four on the bike. He started racing 250s last year, finished fourth in the championship on his first year outing, and that's a good ride from the Frenchman. But the battle is now on the front as Albertine closes on the Frenchman. Can the South African get past Di Mario before the chequered flag? Or can Stefan Everts do something about those two in front? Di Mario comes round, he takes the checkered, then Albertine finishes second. 
And this now puts Albertine firmly in charge at the top of the championship with Stefan Everts coming home behind those two in third place. A still a good ride for the Belgium. Stefan Everts now very much a, a two-horse race with Donny Schmidt dropping out of the picture today. Yeah, now it's between me and Greg. Uh, after the first motor, we was halfway and uh, we was same point. So uh, it, it was like a new uh, GP season. But uh, and for the public, this is what the championship needs, I think. Yeah, I, I think also, you know, uh, the last few years the championship was pretty boring, and now there was some real fight, uh, and, and that's what the people want. <laughs> Round nine of the championship came to Hollis here in the Czech Republic. Trampas Parker, number six, beside Robbie Herring. 14, Frederick Bollave, number five, Monique Bavortz. As the gate came down for the start of heat one. And down in mid-pack, that was Donny Schmidt, the American. A tremendous tumble there and very bruised and battered Schmidt, taking no further part in race one. But into the lead, it was De Marie and Voland, Albertine and Everts, the two Pepsi-Cola Honda riders leading this race away. The Frenchman, De Mario, setting a scorching pace for the others to chase. Everts back in fourth, Albertine leading the championship. Then it was Bollet 14, back there in fifth. But to repeat his overall win at Britain previously, Yves de Maurier leading, now Albertine past Voland. Voland falling into the clutches of Stefan Everts. Bevorts and Parker on the KTM with Bartolini there and Herrin, the British rider, right in that group. But it was de Maurier, a quick man on the dry tracks. Then Albertine leading the championship by two points over that man, number two, Stefan Everts, the Belgium. And Everts pops a pass. A beautiful pass on the inside of Volan moves him up to third, but there was no catching that man. It's Di Maria with this man, Albertine, chasing second. Everts now third, trying to put pace on the two in front. Very dry and dusty the circuit, very hot and humid here. There's Volan, the American. But Di Maria, the Frenchman, so quick, a blistering pace at the front. The question now is, could Albertine catch him? There is the South African from Johannesburg in South Africa, from the Chartwell district. Started racing nine years of age and a world champion in the making, even at that age. The battle was on then again between Voland and Everts. Everts coming to grief, losing that third place. But De Maria stamped his authority at the front. Nobody was going to catch him for the chequered flag. Albertine held on for the 17 points and second. And it was Voland then that eventually took third. Everts finishing fourth. So with Albertine now stretching his points advantage to six in the championship, he too got underway and they bustle into that first corner and bustle indeed they did. A lot of riders down on the ground, 
And amongst that group, Donny Schmidt in trouble again, number three. It just wasn't the Americans' day. Albertine and Everts were the two that shot off into the lead. Di Mario chasing in third. Can Everts get his revenge on Albertine this time and claw back some of those points that he lost in the first race? The pace was truly electrifying. Albertine, the South African, on the Suzuki, and Everts trying to pass on the outside. Did he make it? Indeed he did. The JHK Silkeline rider on the cracker going to the front. But it was the Frenchman Di Marier back in third that was hovering for that place. But it was Everts, the Belgian, that held on for 20 points. Followed him home, the South African, Albertine, and then the Frenchman, number 77, Yves Di Marier for third. Round 10 then in Sweden for the 250 Championship and a massive crowd turning out to enjoy this electrifying racing. Motocross action at its world-class quality as the riders came down onto the line for the start of Heat 1. Talon Voland there, number 277. There's, that's Everton, Di Maria and Voland beside him. Bevort's in that group and Albertine on the left-hand side. The gate dropped. And down that start straight they went, and it was Yoki Carlson, the Swede from Albertine Schmidt, Everts. And that was Robbie Herring, the British rider. Then he's got Nickel, the other British rider behind him. But Carlson it was. Jockey Carlson, 75, leading the championship leader at the moment. Oh, and down went Carlson, bringing Albertine down with him. Both riders looking to be OK at the moment as the Sioux Impact threaded their way through the wreckage. And the lead then was handed to the Belgium Stefan Everts, number two. All Albertine could do now was to pick himself up and charge again. Everts leading, Herring at second, then it was Schmidt and Nickel. Bollet going through. There was Bevort, but Stefan Everts settling down at the front and ensuring that he would take maximum points from this first heat here in Sweden. The British rider Robbie Herring, number 12, second at the moment. Then it was the American Schmidt, managing to stay out of trouble this time on the starts. Bevorts, and there is Albertine, battling as always to get back up at the front and into the maximum points bracket. But at the moment, it was the Belgium Everts that holds the advantage. He leads. He's looking at the 20 points. Herring, second on the Kawasaki, looking at 17 points if he can sustain that position. The battle certainly raised Royal for the lower placings, with Albertine now closing on Schmidt, number three. Then it was Bevort behind that group. But could Albertine get past Schmidt before the checkered? Everts took the win then and maximum points. Second for Robbie Herring, the British rider. Third for Nickel. And fourth for Albertine. What were your thoughts when you went down, Greg? Uh, I was really mad, man. I was setting Jockey up. I would have passed him within the next lap. And then he had a big crash and we were going fast and I could not do nothing about it. I hit straight into him and had a big crash. And what did you think your chances was then of coming back to fourth place? Well, I'm a fighter, you know, and uh, I don't give up till the last lap. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was fourth's decent, but I'd rather win it, you know.
Race two got underway. Down they went. That start straight with the dust coming up. And it was Bolle who headed from Schmidt and then Nickel. Then it was Herring. As we look back at there's Albertine. And not a good start for Albertine or Everts. They're both going to have to work very hard in this one. And Albertine worked very, very hard. Now leading race two here in Sweden. The South African Greg Albertine and the battlers certainly on for second. Schmidt and Herring swapping places. Nickel is behind that group. There is Stefan Everts. He has got a lot of work to do. Just look at this. Herring going through on the inside of Schmidt. Lines up the corner. Oh, too much power. Blocks the exit for Schmidt. Gives Nickel a way through. So Kurt Nickel, the 250 Castrol Honda rider, moving up a position over Schmidt and Robbie Herring. Albertine takes the win, it's Evers for second, and the French youngster, Bolle, taking third. You had a lot to do in that race after a poor start. Yeah, I had to fight very hard, and uh, in the last lap I could catch uh, Frederic Bolle, and I give, I push everything out of my body to catch him, and uh, I did it, and I'm very happy. I'm uh, very pleased with my result today. And the overall victory, which be, must be a very pleasing feeling again, eh? Yeah, I feel very good. It's my 14 in my career, and... Uh, the last one was 13, so I wanted to, to get rid of that uh, 13 GP victory. So now it's 14, and uh, for sure there will come more. Round 11, Hinola here in Finland, and the news up to us is that Stefan Everts, a non-starter, broke his collarbone in practice here on Wednesday, has gone straight back to Belgium to have a titanium pin inserted, and he should be racing again for the USA Grand Prix. But here in Finland, it was Marnik Bavort that hit the front first from Di Maria as the rest of the pack came screaming through, and Albertine there, not a good start for the South African. Marnik Bavort then, one of Albertine's teammates, leads this one from Di Mario. Then it's Nickel, and behind Nickel there is Albertine. Fourth, some of the pressure now off his shoulders in the championship, with Everts not racing here today. Bavort leads just the one point difference between them when they came here or they would have come here had Everts been able to ride but it's bad news for Stefan Everts to Belgium maybe this is where Albertine can wrap the 250 World Championship up the battle raged Royale it was Bevorts and then Di Maria Nickel first second and third Albertine finishing fifth Well, race two now ready on the line, the gate drops. Here we go, heat two from Hinola here in Finland. What can Albertine do this time? Twice off in the first race. And he's not making the mistakes in race two. He's in the lead. His teammate Bavortz, then it's Di Maria third. Schmidt and DeWitt having a little coming together. Schmidt gets the better of it. Trampas Parker behind those two, but Albertine deciding there's no messing around this time. Even though his main rival, Everts, is not here to score points today, he intends to try and notch up a maximum win. Really is a multi-talented rider. So small when he started his riding career at nine years of age. 
he won the South African ADCC Championship. There's DeWitt going through one of his teammates. We're looking back behind DeWitt. There is DeMario. And 17, that's Peter Ivan. He's having a much better race. But it's Albertine then taking the win at the 20 points. And that championship looking even more secure. Werner DeWitt taking second after his teammate Bevortz fell. Then uh, in third, it was 77, the Frenchman, Yves Dumarie. There, the team manager, Sylvain Gabors, with Werner DeWitt and the winner of race two, the South African. Well done, he says, Greg Albertine. Round 12 of the championship came to the USA and Bud Creek. A big crowd of Americans turning out to watch some splendid and exhilarating 250cc motorcycle Grand Prix racing. As the board went up for the start of heat one and back number two, Stefan Evans. After breaking his collarbone, back still with that titanium pin in his shoulder and somebody goes down to the top. Somebody colliding with a cameraman at the top of the circuit. I'm not sure who that was, but I'm sure the cameraman will feel the worst of that encounter. Into the lead then, 92 this is. Jeff Emig, and he's got John Dowd behind him. Then it's Bevorts and Everett. So the two Americans are leading this race. There is DiMario going through and Bartolini behind him. But it's Jeff Emig that leads. The one only 250 Grand Prix race that some of these Americans do usually, and only when it comes to the United States, but it is two local heroes that head the field at the moment. Emig, Dowd is second, Bevortz, then it is Stefan Everts. No signs of Albertine at the moment. There is DeMarie, the Frenchman, he's back there in fifth. Well, the question now is, can anybody get on terms with this man? Jeff Emig. A man that's established himself here in the United States as one of the top riders. As, whoa, look at that. That's Dowd closing the door on Stefan Everts. Certainly knew he was coming through on the inside and gave him no room at all. But it's Emig, 92, that leads at the moment. And nobody seems to be able to catch him. Dowd it is. Under pressure from Bevort and Everts has dropped back a place. There is DiMario waiting for a mistake from them two in front. Checkered flag then. It should be Emig. And indeed, yes, I think it is. Jeff Emig takes the applause of the crowd. We're looking back. Second place man was Bevort. Then it was Dowd. Fourth was Everts. Fifth was DiMario. And Stefan Everts here, clearly in distress, requiring moisture. It's very hot here, wants a drink desperately. Tremendous race from him, considering he hasn't ridden since uh, Sweden, where he broke his collarbone. There is the race winner, Jeff Emig. Well, race two got underway, but not for very long because, as you can see, a few tried to jump the start and they weren't allowed to continue. Race two then, full start, brought back onto the line and they tried again. <laughs> Somebody else got an absolute fly over the gate, but he got away with it the second time. Great deal of urgency with some of these riders as... As Suzuki goes to the front, and it looks like Albertine. It is Albi Lees from Poland. So where is Emig and Dowd? There is Stefan Everts, fourth at the moment. 
down the hill they come. It's so fast here. There's Boland under pressure from number 91. And that's Steve Lamson. Boland is still there. There is Everts and Albertine. Well, he's been off the bike. He's dropped back. There's DeWitt. DeMarie now inherits the lead. Takes the checker flag. Albertine retires with an electrical problem. Boland takes second. And Everts coming home, I think, to take third. Round 13 of the championship comes to uh, Maracay here in Venezuela. And a massive crowd turning out to enjoy the race. And just keep an eye on the five-second board, man. Well, he can run very fast indeed. As the race gets underway, they drift wide into that left-hander. Somebody stopping there on the first corner, but it was Nickel from Eberts. And Bevort, De Maria and Albertine hoping that his electrical problems will not reoccur here as they did in the United States. But the top three going through at the moment, Bevort's third, Albertine fourth, but Everts is up there. There's De Mario. he's back in fifth. Into the lead goes the Belgium, Stefan Everts. Albertine closing in second place, and these two really started to get together because they clashed down when Everts and Albertine took over the lead, then it was Monique Bevorts, and behind Bevorts it was De Marie, number 77, and there's Everts, back in fourth, wishing that he had not come together with Albertine in the way that they did. But it was Albertine that led then to the checkered flag and took the maximum points. Monique Bevorts, his teammate, chased him all the way home for second place. Then it was De Marie in third. He too came down the start straight. Everts there at the front, hoping to get the whole shot, but it was the Frenchman De Marie that led away. DeWitt, then Everts and Bevorts and Nickel. But it was De Marie that set the pace at the front. Everts could only do but watch as De Marie stamped his authority at the front of the race. DeWitt chased all the way around in second place then it was Everts, then Bavortz but those two were to change places before the chequered flag there is Nickel Albertine behind Kurt Nickel but Nickel was to finish fifth so here it is the chequered flag for the Frenchman Yves de Marier. second for DeWitt third for Bavortz Round 14, Suzuka here in Japan. The penultimate round on the two quickest bikes there, De Marie and Nickel. Dave Nickel there, the father of Kurt Nickel, a former top 
Scrambles champion himself in his own day, but it was De Maria on the Pepsi Cola Honda that led down onto the line first. And a lot of expectation around this particular meeting because it's all down to this one between Albertine and Everts, and there they are side by side on the Stargate, but it looked like Albertine got the better of Everts, but it was DeWitt from Bartolini Bolle, and there's Folan, and there's Albertine squeezed in that group on that left-hand corner, and it's Albertine that's on the floor. Greg Albertine, oh, such bad luck, strikes him on lap one. Di Mario, Bartolini second. Bolan in his third, then number eight. Well, there's Everts, number two. Some consolation that Albertine is actually behind him at the moment with his teammate DeWitt. DeWitt moves over. We're back at the front with Di Mario, 77. Then it's Bartolini who went around the jump for some reason, but he got away with it. Then Boland, there's Nickel number four. Then it's Bolle. And a whole mixture of riders coming through. There's Everts. Stefan Everts needs to finish in front of Albertine if he wishes to keep his championship chances alive. Through the whoops comes Di Maria. Andre Bartolini chases still in second position. Boland, Nickel. Bolle, they are settling down. We're looking back for Albertine. Well, that looks like Everts. Indeed, it is. Stefan Everts then beginning to pick his way through the field. And here comes Albertine behind him. So the two championship contenders not having a good race here in Suzuka for race one. 77, Di Maurier. 79, Bartolini. Then it's eight, Voland, four, Kurt Nickel, the British rider. As a whole gaggle come through, that is Stefan Everts. Behind Everts, Schmidt, back with the leaders. Di Maria takes the checkered flag. Bartolini chases him home to take second and 17 points. And third, it was Nickel. Two, the gate drops and away they go. And it is Albertine that's gone to the front. Can he stay there as they come around? No, indeed he can't, or he has. Di Mario on the outside, Albertine on the inside. There's Schmidt behind Everts. It really is congestion as they go over that first jump. But it's Albertine from Bevorts, from Di Mario, Voland, Nickel and Schmidt, Bartolini and Everts. And Everts has got a lot to do. He's got to get back up with Albertine. DeWitt there behind Everts. Whoa! Onto the floor. Well, that looked like Peter Ivan, number 17. But it is Albertine who leads from his teammate, Bevorts, from the Pepsi-Cola Frenchman, 77 Di Mario. Nickel going through. Behind him, it's Stefan Everts, and he has got a lot to do, but into the lead once again goes the Frenchman. Yves Di Maria, there's Albertine, now down into second. Bavortz looking back, it is Nickel through the whoops in fourth. Schmidt and Everts locking it up side by side, and it's Schmidt that gets the better of the two. But it is Di Mario with a celebratory wheelie that takes heat to win. And a second win of the day. Albertine came home then in second.
Round 15 and the final round here at Geldof in Germany of the 250cc World Motocross Grand Prix. Number one, Greg Albertine, a 17 points advantage over second place man in the championships, and that's Stefan Everts. The question now is, which one of these two will it be that walks away from Germany today, a 250cc Grand Prix Championship? Will it Albertine, or will it be this man, Stefan Everts? Talking to the Brit, Paul Malin. There's Kurt Nickel, number four, looking on as the board goes up for the start of Heat 1. Gate drops, here they go. The penultimate race of the year. Who will get the whole shot? It looks like Ebbets. It looks like the Belgium Stefan Ebbets, number two, that has got the whole shot. Ebbets it is. We're looking back for second. That's Nickel. Bartolini was amongst that group. Now, where is Albertine? There he goes up the hill. Not a good start for Albertine. We've got four on the floor. But Stefan Everts, it is that leads heat one of this final championship round. Second place, it's the Brit, Kernickel number four. Then it was Volan going through. De Maria is there. And there is Albertine. 17 points the difference. Albertine can afford not to have to win, but he needs to finish in the top six at least. They come screaming through some of these off cambered corners here. Very difficult conditions for some of the riders, but it's Everts making no mistake at the front. He leads, he won. He's looking at 20 points. Now the question is, where will Albertine finish? Nickel making a charge for the lead. There's Volan third. Di Mario back in fourth. They're sorting themselves out. There is Albertine. We've been looking for him. So he's back in about seventh at the moment. That could be enough. It could all go to the last race. And what a championship it will be. Ebbets leads from Nickel, the 250 Castrol Honda rider from Great Britain. 77, the Frenchman Di Maurier. He's won some overalls this year at the back end of the championship. Certainly is a rider to be reckoned with in 1995. Albertine, who goes to America to race in 1995. Nickel, his second year on the 250s. They've gone through the top runners. We're still waiting for Albertine. There he is, being urged on by the crowd. He needs effective points to ensure that that man doesn't take the championship away from him at the death. But Nickel, dog in, Everts all the way, Voland and Di Maria, very slippery there on that corner. You can see, very shiny the service. Albertine picks his way gently through, applies the power to the back end of the Suzuki. Albertine over the big tabletop he goes. We look the other side as the front runners come through. Everts and Nickel, one and two. Nothing seems to be separating those two. Boland and Di Maria, those are the top four. Five, it looks like six at the moment for Albertine. Yes, indeed. So Albertine on course for his championship. It could all go to the last race. All that Everts could hope for is that Albertine DNFs the last race, which would effectively give Everts the championship on the plate. That's, of course, if he wins, but it's unlikely to happen. Di Marier goes through. There's Albertine closing on Di Marier. Stefan Everts, second in the championship, number two on the bike, looking like it's going to keep the two for 1995. Nickel, four on his bike. There's Albertine chasing Volan. So we've lost Di Marier. Albertine moves up a place. Look at Nickel climbing all over Everts. He wants to take those points, and who's it going to be? It's going to be Everts. 20 points, Everts. 17 for Nickel. And third, we're looking back, and it should be Albertine. It is 15 points. So close from the man himself. Well, it's just 12 points difference. Nicolet being consoled by his wife, Lisa for that second place he wanted to win.
Well, I was a little bit tense in the beginning and uh, not riding so smoothly, but then uh, afterwards I got a bit smoother and started picking up my pace and was much better at the end. And I think uh, if my calculations are correct, I only need eighth place if Stefan wins, but uh, I was feeling really good at the end, so hopefully next race I'll be right up there. Well, Stefan Everts missing from the presentation with disappointment, and one can only understand his feelings. Kurt Nickel then second, Greg Albertine finishing third. 12 points to go into race two with. Well, problems for Greg Albertine. He can't find his goggles. Well, somebody's taken them as a souvenir. There's Stefan Everts. He's got his goggles. And disappointment written all over his face. He's really got to hope for a miracle in this last race of the year. It is the last 250 Grand Prix race of 1994. Hang on to your seats. Here they go. Gate drops. It's all on the last race into that first set of corners, the left-hander and the right-hander. And Everts has gone down. Everts has gone down, looks like 82 team mile Lacquer that's taken the lead from Demaria. Yes, indeed, it's Lacquer, Demaria. Albertine's coming through, but we, Everts has gone down at the back. He's got to finish fourth. There he is, back on the bike. Albertine has to DNF the race and Bollet they're chasing. Uh, the, well, there's Albertine, they're working this out very quickly. If Albertine DNFs the race and Everts finishes fourth, he would have won the World Championship. But the likelihood of that is very, very, uh, well, very unlikely, I should say. Well, there is Everts charging through the field like a man possessed and, well, wouldn't you be? It is Di Mario, 77, the Frenchman that leads in the last race of the year. There is Albertine. Well, he's up in the points. Schmidt and, well, that was Nickel. But Vortz is there as well, five. And Kurt Nickel, finishing second in race two, is up there in a good position. And here comes Everts. Well, he's got more than a mountain to climb. That's Parker behind him, DeWitt also in that group. But it is the Frenchman who excels as always on the hard tracks. Yves de Marier, 77 on the Pepsi Cola Honda that leads the last 250 race of the year. Bollet is second, number 14, another Frenchman. Then it's the Brit, Kurt Nickel. Then it's Albertine, fourth, so Nickel looking on for a good finish. There's Schmidt who could well be retiring at the end of this race. He's got Parker behind him, and just look at this. That's Paul Cooper, the South African 39. He's got Stefan Everts right behind him. Everts has got to get to fourth. And Stefan Everts on the inside of number nine, but it looks like Di Mario that holds the lead. The Frenchman is out there and looking at 20 point. Nickel is second. Kurt Nickel on the 1995 bike is second from Bollet. But it's this man, Di Mario, that has the 20 points in sight. Now Nickel, number four. Bollet, the Frenchman, number 14 behind him. 81, that is Bert Eckenbach. 21, Paul Malin. Here comes Stefan Everts. Well, who would want to have to climb this kind of mountain to stand any chance of winning the World Championship? This is the second year in succession that he's been so close and things have gone wrong for him. Di Mario then takes the win from Nickel. Bollet is third, Bavort, and we've got a battle on here between Everts and Albertine, and Everts trying to push Albi a little wide, but it's going to be Everts that will take six. Albertine takes seventh, but does it really matter? Because he is, once again, the world 250cc motocross champion.
the South African Greg Albertine racing in America for 1995. The cheers, the jubilations and the celebrations can now commence because he is once again the champion. Who needs the goggles now? Former 125cc and 250cc champion, the American Donnie Schmidt collects the jacket flag. He retires. You know, I'm a fighter and uh, I always believe uh, everything. I'll give everything I got to, to what I believe in and I believe I could be champion and I gave it all I got this year. And uh, the team's been fantastic and I did it for them.